Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to talk about your main three bin views that you're going to be working with inside of your bins. That's text view, frame view, and script view. And I want to show you that there's a lot more going on under the hood than initially meets the eye to these three bin displays. Many people stick with just one through their entire editing career and don't realize that there's actually some great hidden benefits to the other two. So in this lesson, I want to talk about the other two not so common views, frame view and script view, and how you can get in and utilize those great hidden features to really speed up your media composer workflow. Now, as always, before we get rolling, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Video Guys. I love Video Guys. I love the fact that I can easily click on one of those links in the show notes below. Head on over to their website and find the subscription that I need for my Media Composer subscription renewal. You can use that coupon code of MC101 to get 5% off your Media Composer license purchase. And to be honest, it's just a very smooth and painless process. I also want to remind you that if you find these tutorials useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share them across social media. It really helps me get the word out there to editors who may be having some issues with Media Composer. Maybe they are just jumping in from another nonlinear editing application, just want to get up to speed. Helping me share these tutorials across your social media channels will really help get the word out there. All right, now before we get rolling, I thought we'd talk a little bit about something that got my brain rolling a little bit from a comment I saw from a friend of mine on LinkedIn. Uh, about a week ago, a new version of Media Composer was just released with some new features in it. They were having some issues, wasn't sure if it was a bug or not. And I want to show you what sort of my... Uh, sort of, I don't want to call it sort of a superstition is when I'm working with Media Composer, but it's something I always do every time a new version comes out. I always read two documents. So what I want to do is I want to draw your attention here to this link on the Avid website. Now, I'm not going to bother to go through the avidtech.my because you're never going to get, you know, the whole website. It's super long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, the link on the screen right now. I'm also going to put a link to this version, which is the 2023 documentation, as well as the 2022 documentation, and you sort of see how it works. Basically, all I'm doing is just swapping out the year in the URL. But what this basically is, is it's the readme and the what's new for each version of Media Composer that comes out. Now, what's important to keep in mind about the releases of Media Composer is that normally the way that it works is that if you have, let's just say, and I can actually show it to you here, let's scroll down here to 2023 as an example. You'll notice 2023 has a what's new and a readme, all right? Then you'll see that 2023.3.1 only has a readme. This is a feature update version. This is a bug fix update. Feature version, and even this here is bug release. You can see anything that's just a readme is a bug release. Anything that's a what's new is a feature release. So let's use the 202012 version as an example. What I will always do, because I'm always super excited about whatever the new features are inside of Media Composer, is I will come to this document first. I get in here, it not only tells me what all the new features are, but I can easily click through, find out what they are, or in most cases, you can actually just watch my tutorials and you'll see how they get implemented into Media Composer as they come along. Now. After reading this document, the next most important document to read is not necessarily what's new, but what has been fixed in this version of Media Composer. You'll see if I scroll down here, here we go. Let's come back up here. It's actually right about here. There we go. All right. What is fixed inside of 2023.12? And more importantly, if you scroll down, what actually is still not working? All right, so normally what I tell you is if a new version of Media Composer comes out, you start using one of the new features, something's not quite working too right, you can get in here and actually check to see if that is a known issue with this version of Media Composer before you worry about getting onto the Avid forums and things like that to actually post bug reports about stuff. So great, great, great documentation to follow along with. Again, I'll put the link back on the screen right here. Again, it's in the show notes as well for you to find this bookmark it. The 2024 version, all we're going to do is simply just swap out 2023 for 2024. Uh, and you'll be able to get all this documentation every time a new version of Media Composer is released. All right, so with that said, let's Command or Alt and tab into Media Composer, and let's get started with this lesson. 
All right, now right off the bat, let's talk a little bit about bin displays and bin views and what the difference is between the two. You'll notice right over here I have a drop down here and if I hover over it, you'll see that this gives me the option to come in and choose a bin view. Now, I'm not really gonna talk anything about bin views in this lesson because we're gonna save that for our next lesson. But what I've done is I've reset all of my bin views back to the standard bin views that come with Media Composer when you create a new user setting. What I can do, Command Shift and Equals, Control Shift and Equals for everybody that's on Windows. What I'm gonna do is head on over to User and you can see all the bin views located right here. Now for the purpose of this lesson, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set our bin view to be basic because in this lesson, we're actually gonna focus right here on our bin displays. We have the text view mode. I have my frame view mode, or you might hear me refer to it as the thumbnail view mode. And then last but certainly not least, we have our script view mode. So you'll see there's our frame view or thumbnail. There's our script view and here is our text view. Now. This is really an it depends on how you like to work, which is going to really determine which bin display that you want to use. Now, I'm going to start out talking about text, then we'll work on to talking about frames, then we'll work on to talking about script. Now, this one is fairly self explanatory, the text one. This is really the information view. Now, again, I call it the basic bin view here. And really what it gives us information here is just the, sort of the basics of our footage. It gives us the name, the start, the end, the duration, tracks, video, and last but certainly not least, comments. Now, I picked this bin view for a very specific reason, and you'll see why in just a second. Now, basically, this setting here, this bin view here, goes hand in hand with our columns that we're going to talk about in the next lesson. So I'm going to leave it here when we're talking about our text view again. Fairly self-explanatory, we could get in, we could change the names of our shots, we can sort, which we saw in the last lesson, alphabetically, numerically, or in reverse order if we want to. But what I want to do now is I want to move on and talk about the other two bin views and how there's some very cool features in there that aren't readily apparent that you might want to get in and utilize depending on your workflow. So let's move on, let's talk about frame view. I'm just gonna click on frame view here. Now frame view is fairly self-explanatory. What it is going to do is it's going to give us a single frame that is going to represent that of our shot. Now you'll also see in here that we have the names of our shots, which is obviously super handy. But to be honest, this is a little bit annoying me scrolling back and forth like such. What I do have the ability to do is to simply navigate up to the top to adjust the size of those frames. And even if I bring it down, I'm still scrolling a little bit from left to right so that I can get a look at all of them. What I'm actually gonna do is just to put it right back up to about there. I think that's probably a pretty good size. I don't need to take it all the way up to be as large as the frame can go. And you'll notice that as I hover over, I do get some tool tips giving me some basic information about the shots here. You'll see I actually have the uh, the duration of the shot here, 4918, 1080p, the date that it was brought in, as well as the time that it was brought in. But for me, what's important right now is to actually see all of these in one view, because to be honest, I don't like scrolling back and forth like this with the drag bar. So how do we go about doing this? What I'm gonna do is navigate right up here to our fast menu, and you'll notice that we have a feature here called Align and Fill. Now for me, I'm not overly concerned about it filling on necessarily a grid, but what I do want to do is actually have it fill the window. You'll notice that we can align it to a grid, we can fill the window, and we can fill sorted. What I'm going to do here is select Fill Window. And as soon as I do that, you'll now see that based on the size of the window, it's going to put the shots in here in basically a nice, easy to navigate view. And what I'm also going to do here is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And I think what I'm actually going to do as well, let's just move this down a little bit because the beauty part about working in frame view is that I can start taking these and rearrange them. Now, keep in mind, this is all one take, but I can start organizing them in a way that's actually very useful for me like this. So maybe I have, you know, the best take is first, you know, the next best take is second, third, et cetera, et cetera. What I can then do and make sure I don't have a clip selected, as we talked about in our previous lesson, come right down here to align and fill. I can simply fill to the window and now you'll see that I have them in order. Now, of course, much like you saw, I can have them snap to a grid as well. But what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to start moving them over here like such. Okay. 
Yeah, we'll sort of push that window over a little bit. Maybe we'll bring it down ever so slightly. See if I can actually get that to come down even further. There we go. Very nice. Because I want to sort of, you know, just make this a little bit of a mess here. And you'll see why in just a second. So maybe we'll just bring this one over here. Very nice. Okay. So I've done this for a very specific reason. Because I did talk before about having to scroll back and forth and up and down to sort of get this to work the way that I want. And I'm using the mouse basically. I only have a scroll wheel. So I can only really go up and down. And then I'm going to drag left and right. But what I actually do have the ability to do is to call up a bin map. Now, what does the bin map do? Well, let me show you. Again, you'll notice because we are talking about the bin, what I'm going to do is navigate to that fast menu. Again, make sure I don't have anything selected so that I can easily see right down here, show bin map. And now you'll see that instead of me having to scroll back and forth and left and right, I can simply just grab the bin map and just drag that wherever I want it to go. Now, I only have what? I think 12 clips in here, nine clips in here. So I sort of did this on purpose, but you might have bins that have 40, 50, 60 clips that you have moved and organized all over the place because maybe you want to have five shots put into one area. You know, let's say you have five shots here because you know that's part of a scene and you have four shots here and then you have six shots here and 12 shots here. And you want to just use that bin map to move around. You can easily do that right here. All right. Now, what I am going to do here is we're just going to get everything back to the way that we had it before here. Let's just fill window. There we go. Very nice. And now what I want to do is show you another great feature. I'm actually just going to do that again here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide that bin map and I'm just going to fill window. Very nice. All right. Now, another fantastic feature that I love, and I'm going to say about frame view, but it's actually about frame and script view is the fact that, you know, let's use this take as an example here. You'll see that it's called scene A angle two multiple takes. Well, you know how we normally can preview stuff. We double click on it. We call it up here. You know, we sort of mark an in and out point there and then we're good to go. Now you'll notice that if I come right back to the beginning here, this represents this frame right here. Footage coming to us courtesy of CineStudy, of course. And what I'm going to do here is that as I go through and I look at clips, I don't necessarily want to double click on them all the time. So there must be an easier way for me to preview and even mark in and out points on shots. So how would I go about doing that? Well, believe it or not, all I actually need to do is I can come over to the clip and select it. And if I use the play key, the L key on the keyboard, now I'm actually going to use JKL. You'll hear people refer to JKL editing. And if you're not really familiar with what that means, it basically means J, play in reverse, K is to pause or stop, and L is to play forward. So if I put basically three fingers on those keys, what I now have the ability to do is to actually not only right, play the clip and see it. the visuals, Scene one, take C. But I can hear it as well. Take one. So as soon as that clapboard snapped, I actually pressed K on the keyboard to stop playback. What I can actually do now, and if you watch over here, I can actually mark an in point in my timeline. Let me actually just bring that back a second here. Stop, play. Take one. I just marked an in point there. I'm going to let the take play out. And I'm going to mark an out point as it's going. total panic. Are you ready? So let's just leave it. And action. Look. Okay, she pops her head out. And she's going to take off. Go. Oh I'm going to mark an out point right there, and I'm going to hit stop. And you'll notice that as soon as I do that, over here in the preview window where that clip was already called up, I now have an in and out point marked. I can actually, with instead of actually double clicking on each clip to call it up in the preview window, I can simply preview it right here inside a frame view, mark in and out point. So now all I have to do is basically take it and either just hit B or V to drop it into a timeline, or I can drag it and drop it to basically create a quick assembly. You, so you can basically get in, organize everything here, mark in and out points, and then simply drag them in to get that order, that layout timeline, ready to go in no time flat. Okay, so that's a great little primer on our frame view. So let's move on now and let's talk about script view. So let's navigate right up here to our script view. I'm simply going to click on it. Now I want to point out that if I come back to frame view for just a second, you'll notice that I have seen a angle three take one as the first shot. Yet if you look at script view, nothing has changed between basically text view and script view. You'll notice scene A, angle one, take one. Right as I come over here, it's basically in that order. And really inside of text view, all you can really do 
is sort alphabetically or numerically. You really can't just take stuff and sort of move it, you know, here or here. Unless you get in and create a custom column to actually call it shot one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then sort that way, there's really no way to rearrange things inside of text view. Or is there? Let me show you how you can actually rearrange things in here to sort it maybe in the order that you might want to see it. Let's head back to script mode for just a second. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come through and I'm just going to put things in a random order that we're just going to call it the order that we want things to appear. So let's take this shot here. I'm just going to place it all the way up here in the first spot. I'll take this shot, put it in second. I'll take this shot, put it in third, etc, etc. Now I'm not really going in any particular order, but what I want to draw your attention to is the fact that once I've now gotten in and rearranged the order here inside of script view, You'll notice we now have scene A, angle three, take two. Well, guess what? If I head back over here to text view, scene A, angle three, take two is now the first shot in the shot order. And what's also very cool about script view is that you can come in and much like I did inside a frame view, I can simply come in. I can use Fashion, JKL editing. Her. Go go to the left of the camera. I can mark an in point at any time. We'll just mark it here. As fast as you can comfortably do it. As the sure, most and I'm going to mark an out get. point right there. I'm just going to stop playback. I'm going to double click. And you can see that there are my in and out points. Now, this shot is obviously, as you can see, very long. But there's the in and out points that I had marked for this shot as I was playing things back. Now, one last thing that I want to show you inside of script view. You'll notice that below each one of the master clip names, in this case, angle three, take two, there's a box that I have the ability to come in and type this is the best shot for this take, all right? And this one here is maybe this is the second best shot for this take. And then obviously as we go, it would be sort of etc. And I'm going to come in here, etc., etc. And you know where I'm going with this, etc., etc., etc. Well, the reason that I was very specific about the view or the basically the bin view that I wanted to see and I wanted to choose basic specifically is that inside of the basic bin view is a column called comments. If I navigate down here and I scroll over to the comments column, you'll now see there is the comments that I entered inside of our script view basically are this is the best shot the second best shot etc 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 so as i'm entering that information in the comments for each one of these shots it's all transferring over into that bin view now keep in mind if i had three different bin views that each contained the comments column obviously i would see those comments in that column across the different bin views all right I think that's a good place to wrap up for this lesson. In our next lesson, we're going to talk specifically about bin views, how we can create our own bin views. I'm just going to remove the ones that come standard with your user settings. We're going to create some good basic ones that we're going to use. And I'm going to show you how to create custom columns for maybe certain parameters that you need to get in and be able to track. I'm going to show you how to create those columns quickly and easily. All right, now that's a good place to wrap up. And as always, before we end, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Video Guys. As always, if you're looking to renew that Media Composer subscription, don't forget to check out the show notes below for links to those popular Media Composer subscription options. And I also want to mention that there are a lot of times throughout the year that Video Guys do offer sales. There's actually one going on as of this recording where you can actually save 20% off a Media Composer subscription. So don't forget to check them out. Use that coupon code of MC101 to get your 5% off. And please, if you found this tutorial useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media to help me get the word out there to editors that might be looking to get up to speed in Avid Media Composer. And last, if you do have any questions, please feel free to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching.